BYD is a relatively newcomer in the automobile industry. It started off as a battery maker in the 80s and 90s, bought a munition factory from Norminko, the Chinese tank company, in the early 2000s, made cars that suspiciously look like Corollas but with Mitsubishi-based power plants, got into hybrid and EVs, got a lot of new energy subsidiary from the Chinese government, hired uh, the design head for Alfa Romeo, Lamborghini, and a few others. And then they made this. This is the BYD Sphere. Effectively, it's an all-electric luxury for Bangladesh by Bangladesh standards that does 0 to 100 in less than 4 seconds. Let's take a look at it. Let's start with the elephant in the room. What exactly is BYD? Well, officially, it, so it stands for Build Your Dreams. Although if you go back a few years and dig up an old newspaper by the, by the founder of this company, he would say, jokingly of course, that it actually stands for Build Bring Your Dollars. With that said, the design of this car is very dreamlike if you ignore a few things. Uh, starting at the front, it has a very smooth aerodynamic nose, uh, a, view, a very beautiful LED, LED lights, a pair of tiny DRLs, some fake intake vents, uh, uh, what I can only describe as vanity lighting, and cameras, lots and lots of hidden cameras. There's a funk underneath, we'll talk about it later. Move to the side, look at the BYD design badge, which is weird. 19 inch wheels with aerodynamic LRs, supposed to save you, save you a few kilometers of range. Uh, some really nicely sculpted rear 4 VMs. And, uh, door handles that pops out. The sky sky had some, again, some nice fake intake. Looks sporty. And then there's the charger. Which pops up as you press it. It says standard CCS2 with first driving capability. Uh, I'm not going to give you exact numbers. We'll put it on screen for you to read if you want to. From the top of my head, the range is around 570 kilometers. And the battery, I think, a total of 82 point something kilowatt. Being a latest and greatest Chinese EV, it has fast charging capability, which, if you have the right charger, will fill it up from 30 to 80 percent in half an, half an hour. But the, with the one that does come with this car will take 36 hours to fill it up. As you open the engine bay, you'll find that there's no engine. Being an electric car, the engines are in between the wheels with the battery pack being under your seat. Instead, you'll find a small compartment inside which you'll typically find the home charger. Things get a lot more interesting as you move to the back. Uh, unlike solid colors, BYD opted for a 3D design with dotted, dotted uh, black stripes covering the entire rear, ta rear tail light assembly. A single light bar stretches all across the tailgate, giving the car a very unique and distinct look that's hard to miss at night. Uh, below that, you got the badge. This is a performance version, so it has the all-wheel drive badge. That means all four wheels get power, and the model number, and a little nice touch. See, all the petrol cars usually put the engine size, a 3.8 liter, 1.2 liter, in the bottom of the model. BYD instead put in the acceleration number. This car does hit 0 to 100 in 3.8 seconds, as evident by the badge. Below that, you got a couple of camera and a very nice looking diffuser and a couple of fake vents. Moving to the tail grade, it is powered. You have to press this button to open it, or you can open it through the fob. Inside, you got a very spacious boot and the BYD uh, home charger. Opening it up, you'll get, give me a second, you'll get a CCS2 plug, 
the I'm guessing the power converter. I don't know. I don't remember the exact what. Basically, the one that shows you how much is charged, and and that's about it. Uh, beside, oh, there is also the subwoofer. It's made by a European company called Dyna Audio. It's apparently, although not known as, known as a mainstream band, is quite popular among audiophiles. Underneath this false door, you got a hidden storage compartment. We also got a couple of signs and not much else. Weirdly, the car doesn't come with any kind of sealant feature. So if you do get a puncture, you are going to have a bad time. Now, being a power tailgate, there's two ways to open, close it. You can press this button, which will just close it. You can press this button, which will lock it. Otherwise, if you can be, can do that, you can always press this button twice in your fob and it will close all by itself. But that done, let's get inside. As someone who is a bit tall and wide than the general masses, I have a bit of a problem with this car. You see, while this sloping roofline looks great, it makes it a little difficult to get in. Which is quite painful if you're not careful. Now, after you get inside the car, it's actually quite cozy. The seats are nice, they're ventilated and heated. Uh, you got two dual charging pads, wireless. And a neat, a giant screen with a neat party trick. If you press this button, the thing spins. And you got yourself a Tesla tablet, or like a better description. Unlike the Tesla Model 3, you also get a screen in front of you, telling you vehicle status, speed, battery charge, everything. The steering wheel is nicely wrapped with leather and has a punch-up button, one of them also allows you to reorient the front the center console. Under the wireless charger, you got controls for your gear, start stop button, parking brake, hazard light, driving mode, volume controls, aircon, and everything else. That said, almost all of the major function is controlled through the screen, which makes making any change while driving a bit convoluting. The material quality in this car is excellent, which is expected considering this is a one core, over one core car. You got Napa leather everywhere, actual metal trims, automated climate vents that automatically spreads the air across the car where needed, uh, adjustable cup holders, and a very spacious center console. Uh, interesting thing about the center console is this NFC tag. This car comes with two types of key. First is the usual key fob. The other is a card. If you're familiar with the Tesla Model 3, it's the same deal. You take the card, you press it here, and the card starts. Beside that, there is also an app that lets you do the same thing. Unfortunately, that doesn't work in Bangladesh yet. Beside that, you got speakers everywhere. The system has around 12 speakers spread all across the car. There is an extra storage console, ignore the camera bag, underneath the transmission tunnel, or where, sh where would be a transmission tunnel with a 12 volt here, which is a little hard to get to. And beside that, there are some Alcantara here. The visors comes with an illuminated mirror to look at yourself reading lights and this giant glass roof which i hope whoever buy this car never has to replace because that looks very very expensive but that said let's take a closer look at this infotainment screen unlike most convoluted audio system or infotainment system found in most cars the buid is, is pretty much works like any other android tablet you got your phone music section and radio and if you slide it a bit you got all the apps, BYD assistance, phone, radio, you know, all the Trinity ones. There's an album button, there's a button for smart charging, there's an option to change your themes. For, then there's a lot of them, for example, I quite like this one, which personally I think goes nicely with this, with this car. 
Beside that, this car, beside being, beside looking nice, this screen has a problem that I find personally a bit irritating. For starters, you want to change the temperature. Okay, how do you do it? You press this button and then you, then you switch to the preferred temperature. There is no knob, so you can do it instinctively. You have to take your eyes off the road and do it, which is a bit of a bit annoying. The same thing is with same thing is true with the heating and cooling seats. You want a cool seat, you have to go in the air con system, press vent and heating, and then turn on the cool seats or the heated one if you want to. As someone who is very fond of buttons, this is a bit annoying. But that said, also, much like Android, there are memory functions. You can keep a tab of all the apps you've been to. Also, there's an interesting system called Split Screen App, which we haven't actually figured out how to use. But basically, in theory, it's supposed to let you choose two apps at the same time. Speaking of separate apps, it should be noted the built-in narration system doesn't work in Bangladesh. You have to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay to use navigation. Alright, let's move to the back seats. Thankfully, unlike the front doors, the rear one is pretty easy to get into. And inside, much like the front, is very comfy. You got leather wrapped seat with perforate perforation. The seat, the front seat actually looks better from the rear. You got your two AC vents, a couple of USB ports, one C, one Type A. Uh, touch sensitive lights that you can turn and off with, uh, with your finger. Uh, armrests with built in cup holders. And seats that are amazingly comfy, especially compared to what you get on every other car, even top-end German ones. There's also some nice practical touch. For example, you'll find a couple of hooks built into the B-pillar where you can hang your grocery or laundry when you pick them up from your preferred laundry store. And also speakers built into both the door handle and the door card. Of all the cars I've been in in the last year and a half this has to be the most premium feeling and this is coming from a guy who drove beamers in the last few months as much as i love this rear seat i now have to drive this car so once again i have to bang my head on the a pillar and get into the driver's seat although to be fair afterward i'm really looking forward to it okay once again time for some body conditions oh my now that the sun is a bit out, you can see that the car has some light, uh, ambient lighting accents and power seats as well. Now, to start the car is pretty straightforward. You press on the brake button and press the start top, which in this case turned it off. Uh, there's the welcome animation. Go get off of parking mode, put it into D, let go of the brake, and boom, you're driving. Being an EV, the car is powerful. The official numbers, which I don't remember right now, is somewhere around 350 horsepower and 600 newton meters of torque. A bit over 500 newton meters of torque. Now, being an being there's no transmission or any other thing on a bob, when you push it down in let's say sport more you get something like this which even on an uphill is a bit exhilarating beside the acceleration the car has a lot of active safety feature like it skips you on your lane it skips on you see on the lane on by itself uh there is cruise control automatic braking and a lot of bings and bongs whenever you do something that you're not legally supposed to. Uh, besides those, there are blind spot monitorings and as I mentioned before, uh, 
Oh, that is a bit high. The ground clearance of this car is also quite good. Being able to handle half of the still under construction part of 300 feet pretty easily. Beside all this active safety feature, the car is very planted to the ground thanks to its blade battery architecture which blends itself with the frame. Being a technologically advanced car that competes directly with the Teslas of the world, it does have its own self-driving system. Uh, I don't exactly remember the name, I'll put it on the screen. Uh, which, although for some reason the press release mentioned torture in it, I have no idea why, uh, that doesn't really work in Bangladesh since most of our infrastructure is a lot to be desired. The, only, the main reason you would ever buy... Now, as I was saying a couple of days back, the best part of this car is its acceleration, being an electric car, it goes really fast. Let's put it on sport. And then... Go! Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, this does not get old. As I was saying before the battery decided to give up last time, being a Tesla competitor, this car does have its own self-driving capability. It has a very fancy name that I'll put on screen because... Uh, both me and the media team got it wrong more than once. Um, beside that, bone-chilling acceleration that actually hurts your internal organs, the car is very well planted to the ground thanks to the battery being under the car. Meaning if you throw it around, it jerks a bit, but there is no body roll. Having a lot of active safety feature, it constantly bings and bongs. But honestly, that's not a bad thing, all things considered. Considering how fast this car is, you only got split second to screw up. But that said, driving the car as a daily is amazing. You can do pretty much everything you want in a normal car if you put it on eco mode without the hair raising acceleration but if you do like to go a bit fast you can put it on sport mode and laugh like an idiot i just did a few seconds ago overall it's an amazing car especially for the price at one core four the same performance edition cost about as much as a two series grand pay which is the cheapest brand new bmw you can buy in bangladesh officially Compared to the Grand Coupe, the sale is much faster, much prettier in my opinion, and has far better tech than the Grand Coupe. It's much more wobbly, it's much more, in my opinion, ugly, and it doesn't have nowhere near the tech this car has. Granted, that's a German car. The, with the patch that's been around for almost a century now compared to BYD, which is around for less than two decades. But when you think about it, it's designed by the same people. BYD didn't spare any expense getting the best people to build their cars. So if you're looking for a car with German built quality, writing first acceleration that even makes a Tesla uncomfortable, and a car that will definitely stand out from your companions or companions and if the bank's willing to do it you should consider this Tesla is gonna Tesla won't come to Bangladesh anytime soon not officially this is the closest you can get and personally I think this is a much better car than Tesla simply because it actually has a damn gauge cluster <laughs>